Adventures of the Saint, starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris, and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as The Saint. Taxi! Taxi! Uh, 4,500 Sutter, please. It's uh, kind of light, ain't it? Yes, it is. Uh, uh, comes this time of night, I figure a guy should order... Uh, 4,500 uh... Sutter, please. Yeah. Mind you, I, uh, I don't like to get personal. You Driver. Know, but, uh, yeah? Of all the cabs in San Francisco, most of them operated by drivers who mind their own business. Why did I have to get your cab? Well, I like... Who are you going to see at 4,500? My name is Simon Templer. I'm six foot one inches tall, and I have a birthmark on my right shoulder blade. My income for last That's year was... That's all right. Evading the question, huh? Uh, I give up. I'm going to visit a man named Clarence Quigley. Clarence Quigley? Clarence Quigley. Uh-huh. Uh, you're going to see this uh, alleged Clarence Quigley look, about... Look, he's got a collection of paintings. I like to look at paintings. Maybe that will seem odd to you, but... Oh, come, uh, come now. No temper. Now, if I was your wife, you'd have to do better than that, you know. Oh. So how much do I owe you? And go away. Well, would you think I was soaking you if I suggested three bucks? I would. As uh, one man of the world to another, let's uh, make it three bucks anyway. Let's just be yokels and make it 50 cents. Here you are. Well, I... Hey... Hey, is that blonde giving you the eye or me? Blonde? Yeah, the one coming down the street towards us. Oh, yeah. Best, uh, best foot forward. I never saw her before in my life. Elsworth, dear. Oh, Elsworth, dear. Uh, uh, I beg your pardon, but that's my neck you've got your arms around, Miss... Uh... Oh, a man named Clarence Quigley, huh? Driver, stop heckling. Look, miss, whatever your name is, the way you're strangling me is a pleasant way to be strangled, oh, but... Uh... Elsworth, dear, you... You sound so cold. I'm not Ellsworth, dear. I think I can honestly say I have never been Ellsworth, dear. You're not? No. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were. Or maybe I just hoped you were. Uh, don't you know Ellsworth, dear, when you see him? No, I don't, I guess. But, uh... I saw you and then the name came to me, so I thought... Uh, who is Ellsworth? I don't know. Well, I suppose a certain amount of confusion about uh, who or what Ellsworth is is understandable, but... that but isn't the worst. It isn't? No, you... See, not only don't I know who Ellsworth is, but... Yes? I don't even know who I am. I want to know in a general sort of way is uh, how Mr. Clarence Quigley is going to feel. Driver, would you mind concentrating on your driving? Uh, you know, he's liable to be frustrated, like uh, I'm taking you and a lady right back to where you started. My apartment, yes, because Miss, uh, Miss X needs help. Oh, I feel as though I'm imposing on you, Mr. Kemp. Nonsense. The hour's late. You couldn't very well go wandering about the streets indefinitely. Especially in that hat. Anything wrong with my head? Not a thing. No, it's very charming and immaculate. Yeah, also, it resembles a bird's home away from home. Well, mister, we have returned from where we went away. Good. Miss X? Thank you. Huh? You're going to keep on being a yokel, huh? Here. Mm-hmm. This time only half a yokel. Well, goodbye. You know where I'm going? No. I'm going to lurk outside of Clarence Quigley. I think tonight he's a fellow who needs a friend. <laughs> I need one, too. Oh, come along now. There you go. Now, take your hat off and make yourself comfortable. All right. Oh, I'm so afraid. Oh, Lost. quiet now. now. Let's take a look at your back. Here. Mm-hmm. Usual odds and ends. And they're compact. Initials. DM. DM, does that suggest anything? DM? Hmm. No. No, it doesn't. Nothing means anything. All I remember is being outside an art gallery on Sutter. Hey, you're well-dressed. Compact's gold, no latchkey, which means you probably don't live alone, which could also mean you've been missed. 
You phoned it? Yes, the police. Missing persons bureau. They, uh... uh hello? Oh, get me Inspector Murray, hmm? Thanks. I'll hold on. I hope maybe they know about me. Oh! What's the matter? Oh, I just touched the back of my head. It's terribly painful. Come here. Huh. Yeah, bruise the size of what I wish my bank account was. And there's the cause of your amnesia. Uh, hello, Inspector. Uh, Simon Templer. Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> Inspector, your language is deplorable. Inspector, I'm looking for someone, a blonde. Uh, Inspector, no. Mm, no. Well, maybe, but not tonight. At any rate, the girl I'm looking for is around 22 years old, blonde hair, blue eyes, height 5 or 3 inches, and thereabouts. Wearing a street suit, brown, white blouse with ruffles at the neck and... What? Oh. Oh, you're looking for her, too. Her name's Darcy Moore. Uh, why do you want her? Oh, I see. And <laughs> I, I guess you've got priority. <laughs> Goodbye. They want me. Yes, I think. Because I've been reported missing. Partially that. What else do they want me for? Murder. <laughs> Try another cup of coffee. Dorothy, I, well, I guess we'll call you that unless we get evidence to the contrary. Dorothy Moore would fit the initials on your compact. What am I going to do? You stay here and wait for me. Where are you going? Well, from the information I've been able to get on the phone, your guardian, a man named Matthew Schreiber, was shot and killed earlier this evening. You disappeared. That's all the information in the public domain at the moment. I'm going to look for more. At my house? Yes. Oh, shouldn't you turn me over to the police? Oh, well, actually, I don't really know that you are, Dorothy Moore. I'd like to know a little more about the murder itself before coming to any decision. You mean you want to help me? Yes. And I need help, so because... You see, what's so terrible about it all is that... I don't remember anything at all, so... I can't even say I didn't murder anyone. <laughs> Fun making you. Goodbye. Now, wait a minute. Don't shut the door. Why not? I'm coming in. Oh. All right. I uh, hate to seem prying, but uh, who are you? Uh, Simon Templer. Uh, an attractive name. Much more distinguished than mine. Oh, what's your name? Walters. Not the most glamorous name in the world, but I'm a butler, so I bear up. Good. Where is everybody? In the library. They're so well-bred. Oh, uh, who is in the library? Mrs. Atkins, the housekeeper, the Cassandra of our day. A gloomy lady prophesying disaster, hmm? Yes. And, of course, there's Mr. Tinsley. Mr. Tinsley? A strange fellow who spends a good deal of his time sitting on small horses and hitting a large ball with a long wooden stick. A polo player. Doesn't matter what you call it, it's no job for a grown man. Uh, what's his relationship to Miss Moore? Oh, let's not start prying, shall we? Expound. Well... To breach your confidence, he's engaged to marry Miss Moore. If and when she's found, and if she happens to be innocent of her guardian's assassination. Oh. Anyone else in the library? No, no, no. Mr. Schreiber, dear departed soul, is detained elsewhere at the morgue. He was shot in the library. Oh, that's a bad place to be shot. Usually fatal. I suppose you take me to the library. Tell me, why did the police suspect Miss Moore? Because of me. You see, I told them that I heard shots in the house. I left my quarters on the gallop, ran towards the library. Just before I got there, the door opened and Miss Dorothy ran out. Ran down the hall and out the front door. Is that true? My dear Mr. Templer, if not, would I have told the police otherwise? I don't know. Besides, it, it isn't good form to suspect the butler. The library, sir. Okay. Mrs. Atkins, Mr. Tinsley, Mr. Templer. What do you want? I'm looking for Miss Moore. So, young man, are the police. Why? Her guardian was murdered. All his money goes to her, and she's disappeared. Perhaps she didn't murder Mrs. Schreiber. But you wouldn't bet on it. <laughs> Perhaps I did. I hated him. Perhaps Mr. Tinsley there did. <clears throat> now, now, look here. Isn't he priceless? Now, look here. Such a typical phrase. So typical, I wonder if he can really be so stupid. I love Dorothy, and... No uh... one has questioned that. 
But what is it about her that you love? The money she was to get when Mr. Shriver died? The money you wouldn't have got if you'd married Dorothy against Mr. Shriver's wishes? Mr. Shriver didn't approve of the marriage? He, uh... <laughs> Well, he hesitated about it, but uh, we were working on it. And then became impatient. Now, look here. Then you have... Don't begin. I resent that. Good. It is now on record that you resent it. Uh, how about Walter? Walter? Yes, what motive would he have? What makes you think he has one? Oh, I'm the hopeful type. Walter's is a man with a criminal past. Whether or not he got tired of his upright life here, I cannot say. But it wouldn't surprise you. What may surprise both of you, however, is an odd fact. Dorothy Moore is suffering from total amnesia. Amnesia? What do you mean? She remembers nothing of her past, herself, neither name nor habitation. How horrible. How convenient. Wait a minute. How do you know that? Why get around? Well, then you must know where she is. You've got to tell me. Mr. I... Tinsley is now being the ardent lover. I can't tell you. Why? Well, whoever shot Schreiber, there's very little doubt that Dorothy saw the killer, but Dorothy doesn't remember. The killer, therefore, would have an urgent interest in getting hold of Dorothy before she did remember and making sure that she would never remember anything again. Well, uh, good night, you lovely people. <laughs> Dorothy? Dorothy? Dorothy! Me again. Did you like the place so much the first time? Where's Dorothy? Miss Moore? Yes, did she come back here? Back? From where? She was at my apartment. When I got there, she was gone. Oh, she did come back here. She didn't ring. Let's find out. Tinsley and Mrs. Atkins still around? Mrs. Atkins has gone up to bed, I think. As for Mr. Tinsley, I imagine he's something to whiskey. Yeah, we'll find out. Uh, Tinsley, uh... uh... Oh, it's you. Yes, where's Dorothy? You're the one who knows. I'm the one who knew. Did she come back here? I haven't seen her. Walters, where's Mrs. Atkins' room? This way, sir. Now, come along, Tinsley. I'd like both of you in sight. Sir. If you insist. Mrs. Atkins will not be pleased at having her sleep interrupted. I'm not pleased either. Uh, this is her room, sir. Oh, thanks. girl must be asleep. Yeah, then we must wake her up. Oh, she's a very sound sleeper. Yeah, then we'll go in and wake her. <gasps> wow. How do you like that? Mrs. Atkins. Strung up to a beam. Anyone got a knife? Yes. Yes. Here you are. Now, we'll cut the rope and get her down. The bed's over there. Uh -huh. uh, that's that. Is she dead? She's dead. Poor old girl. Although, you know something? What? She must have killed the old man. Shriver, I mean. Then she committed suicide. In, in remorse, I mean. For heaven's sakes, Templar, stop playing with that rope. But this is a very interesting rope. Is it? Why? Because it proves, you see, that she didn't commit suicide. She was murdered. <laughs> Yes, Inspector Murray. I understand you don't think that Mrs. Atkins committed suicide. I know she didn't. Well, while the boys are playing with fingerprints and stuff, uh, would you mind explaining to a poor benighted member of the lower intellectual classes, uh, I mean, uh, a cop like me... Oh, Murray, now stop pulling my leg. You're one of the brainiest men I know. Then why do you always beat me to a case? Oh, I'm prettier. Uh-huh. Now, about this alleged phony suicide... Well, take a look at the rope with which Mrs. Atkins is supposed to have hanged herself. Now, well, let's see. The rope was thrown over the beam there. Uh -huh. oh. hmm. I'm afraid you're right, Templar. Yeah, it wasn't hard to spot. 
Her weight would have pulled the rope sharply down over the beam. The fibers of the rope, therefore, should have slanted upward. Uh, instead of which, they slant down, indicating that somebody put the rope around Mrs. Atkins' neck and then hauled her up. We were supposed to think that Mrs. Atkins committed suicide as a confession of guilt. Which leaves us where? In the Schreiber home. I'm more interested in where the girl is. Dorothy Moore? Uh-huh. Why? Because I have... Hey, Mary. Look, coming through the door. Oh, I'm not sure. Simon. Oh, hello, Dorothy. I don't know exactly how I got here, but I don't recognize the place at all. Yet I should, shouldn't I? Yes, you should, Miss Moore, because this is where you live. But I'm afraid you're not going to stay very long. What, what do you mean? I'm placing you under arrest on suspicion of murder. You know, I love police headquarters. They're so romantic. Uh Uh-huh. Mary, how are you going to prove anything against that girl if she's suffering total amnesia? By proving that her amnesia is a fake. Oh, how? I have an alienist coming over here to look at one of our guests. I'll have him see Miss Moore, too. He's due any minute. I'll go get the girl now. I wonder. Through the other door. Come in. Hello. Well, you're not Murray. I was supposed... Who are you? Doll, of course. Now, what's the matter with you? What are you complaining oh, about? But I'm not the oh, one... Oh, come, that... come. We've got to get to the bottom of these things, don't we? I suppose so. Now, when you were a little boy, what did you want most of all? To be a big boy. Mm-hmm. Are you afraid of the dark? No. No? You are not afraid because uh, you have little friends who come to you in the dark, perhaps, eh? No. Now, why are you afraid of the dark? Oh, it's a long, long story. And, uh... You know, um, you don't look at all well. Well, I don't feel so good either. No. You should see a doctor. Thank you. Thank you. I think I will. <laughs> hey, Goodbye. Oh, uh, Templar. Yeah. Uh, your alienist was here, Murray, but he, he laughed. Alienist? Mm. Well, I just phoned him and told him not to come. The district attorney wouldn't hold the girl. Insufficient evidence and ballistics. Ran a paraffin test. No proof that she'd fired a gun. But uh, the man who was just in here, Dahl, I think his name was? Dahl? Uh-huh. He's not the alienist. He's the guy the alienist was coming to examine. He's nuts. Oh, dear. Hmm. Well, I guess you're happy now that we can't hold the girl. No, no, because while you were holding her, things were safe. Now, Mary, let's go visit. Go visit where? The Schreiber house, a house where two people have died, a house very convenient for murder. Coming in. Yes, sir. Dorothy's home? Yes, sir. She got here when? Ten minutes ago, perhaps. Well, we'll go to the library. Yes, sir. She got here ten minutes ago, and and then? She sat in this room for a few minutes, uh-huh. made a phone call, and went up to bed. She uh, tried to phone you, Mr. Templer. I'll wake her up and get her down here. Uh, hold on, now. Tinsley around? In the guest room, playing solitaire, I think. Get him down here, too. That I will, And sir. Walter's... Yes? You come back, too. Sure. Having fun, Temper? I don't care very much for this stage of any case, but I... What are you doing with that telephone? Hiding it under the couch here. Are you being subtle again? Again? Oh, you flatter me. Simon. Uh, hello, Dorothy. Sorry to have had you wake, oh, but I... Oh, I wasn't asleep. I was trying to remember. Uh, you will if you get the chance. Tinsley's here in the house, isn't he? Yes, he is. For heaven's sakes, is a man never to get any peace? Uh, you know Inspector Murray, Mr. Tinsley? Oh, yes, the policeman. Oh, look, now get off your polo pony and... Where's Walters? By now, on his way to Canada, I imagine. Dorothy, get on the phone right away. The phone? Yes, mm-hmm. of course. Oh, well, there doesn't seem to be one in here. Perhaps in the next room. Why do you want me to phone? I don't. But you just said... Dorothy, didn't there used to be a phone in this room? I don't know it. I don't remember. Oh, yes, yes, your amnesia. But you remember everything that happened since the blow on your head, don't you? Well, of course. But then equally, of course, since you were in this room a very little while ago, and since you you used a phone in here, you should have remembered that. Why didn't you? Well, I don't know. It 
slipped my mind. No, Dorothy, it didn't slip your mind. You were merely being over-careful. What does that mean? It means that you are not now nor ever were suffering from amnesia. Why should I pretend to have amnesia? Because you killed your uncle. You knew you'd need something to help you out in court, so you wandered about until you found someone on whom you could try out your amnesia. That happened to be me. You're just saying those things without proof. Besides, there was a paraffin test. It indicates merely that you wore gloves when you shot your uncle. It indicates I might have worn them if I'd shot him. You can't prove I did. I can prove your amnesia was phony, that along with some other things. How can you prove it? Very simple. Your hat. What? When you arrived at my apartment, you took your hat off, discovered a large bruise on the back of your head. That was to supply a plausible reason for your amnesia. But, Dorothy, as I remarked to the cab driver at the time, your hat was immaculate, untouched. You're asking us to believe that the killer knocked you out and then carefully put your hat back on your head again? I'm not asking you to believe anything. I'm going. What a charming revolver. The one you used on your uncle? It still has bullets in it, so don't try to stop me. Uh, Dorothy, you didn't ask me how I could be so sure the killer hadn't done that business with your hat. I don't care. I'm so sure because of Walter's statement. Remember, he saw you rush out immediately after the shot? All right, you're smart, but you'll never stop me. Perhaps not, but Walter, who's right behind you, will. Oh, no, you can't fool me He wasn't trying to, Miss Dorothy. I think I'd, I'd better... Well, you're no gentleman. You knocked Miss Moore out with a bottle. Yes, sir. But but you said you were going to Canada. You misunderstood me, sir. I merely said I was going to get some Canada dry. Uh, now the bottle's ruined. That's too bad. Oh, never mind, Walt. There's no harm done. Inspector Murray, you'll take Miss Moore, and I'll take an old-fashioned. <laughs> have been listening to another adventure of The Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. And now here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, next week most of you will be enjoying a wonderful Thanksgiving dinner. And while you're eating your Thanksgiving turkey and counting your blessings of the past year, think. Think for a moment of the millions of people who don't get enough to eat. Think, and then send your subscription right away for a food package to be delivered to some needy family in Europe. Send your contribution to CARE, C-A-R-E, New York. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at this same time for another exciting adventure of the saint. Good night. Lou Vitties. Our cast included Peggy Weber, Ted Von Elf, Jerry Hausner, Tom Brown, and Daniel Hurley. The music was composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris, is a James L. Safier production and is directed by Thomas A. McEvity. Vincent Price is soon to be seen in Robert Lippert's production of The Baron of Arizona. All you Saints fans will be glad to know that the Saints comic books are on sale at all you stands. Your announcer, Merrill Ross. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.